You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Well, energy, big issue uh, in Europe, especially, but in the U.S. as well. Uh, look, uh, the high price of nat gas right now is directly related to what's going on in Europe because 20 percent approximately of the U.S.'s nat gas production is going into LNG ships over to Europe to try to help them get through the winter. And it's created to higher prices than we've seen in nearly a decade. Uh, we're right about $10 uh, nat gas and potentially could go a lot higher than that. And well, all seems well and good. Oil prices are high, but there's a lot more to this market than that. We've also got the labor shortage and even though uh, government has uh, sought to shunt uh, additional petroleum production and nat gas, uh, the fact is the market uh, is creating an irresistible demand for entrepreneurs, such as the one you are about to hear from, Grant Norwood. Um, Grant, you've, uh, you're in the energy patch, you're in Texas, and uh, your company is kind of at the forefront of all of this small producer but rapidly growing uh norwood energy you find them at norwoodenergycorp.com so grant what exactly is going on with this market why is it so much different than any other energy market we've ever seen in this country before well it's kind of an interesting question there's a lot of uh interesting things going on across the globe and there's so many shortages in other countries we've increased our lng capacity so we're exporting a lot of natural gas um we had a pretty warm summer uh we've had two pretty devastating winters you know on top of that we've just had a lack of investment uh in new drilling and new exploration for the last couple of years so um it's kind of all coming to a head and you're just seeing these massive spikes in prices um and the labor shortage all of the materials that go into drilling a well you know for one you know you can't find labor for two uh it's such an inflated cost to drill a well that so many people are just like you know they're holding back you know they're going well if if i start drilling this well i can't get the labor we don't get it finished on time we missed the rally and we overpaid for the well you know that's just gonna be counterproductive so there's some people that are just waiting on the price of uh drilling and tubulars to be specific to come down uh before they start uh deploying any capital you know because so many times uh you know you get a well drill and it's sitting there uncompleted so uh you've got that capital out there and it's not showing you any returns so there's a lot of just hesitation to move forward. I think the people that are thriving right now have long-term contracts with vendors. They've got a line on supplies and they're comfortable that they can get their wells online uh, so they can maximize this price hike um, before it goes away. Okay, so everybody's in a rush because you're not sure how long these high prices are going to last. A lot of right. it is due to the geopolitical situation in uh, Russia. Ukraine, but, um, you know, cyclically, uh, we really uh, were due for pretty major increase of nat gas prices. Uh, the discount of per BTU of nat gas to oil uh, has been substantial over Correct. the last decade. So that kind of had to shrink, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, usually it's like 20 to 1 when you're converting it just based off of prices. But if you look at it today, it's somewhere around 9 to 1. So, you know, if you look at back a year ago, um, we we're trading around $1.80 per sellable unit, which is what we call an MCF. Um, so being right there below 10 a day, it's somewhere 
in the in the range of like a 300 to 350 dollar barrel of oil so it's really really hard to resist i think those of us uh that are comfortable that this uh price increase is going to be here for a while uh, are really doing well and growing a lot faster than they would an ordinary year um but yeah it's interesting times and i think that at least from our point of view it's going to be here for quite a while just because i don't see the labor market getting better i don't see um the price of these uh, different materials we need coming down. So I don't know where it's going to come from. Um, all the, a lot of the channels have been cut off with some of the trouble going on over in Europe. Um, I don't really see OPEC uh, turning on any new supply. Uh, there's still a lot of reason to believe that some of the OPEC producers have enough trouble in their own nations that it's going to even get worse. So yeah, we've seen a little pullback here in the last month and a half. Um, but there's signs of a new rally. And unless like a major recession throws it off, we're probably headed right back where we were uh, right in the middle of the second quarter. Well, when we look at past uh, oil booms, it's a boom and bust business. And uh, I'm sure people were in the same situation as you back in the 70s, back in the 80s, back in the 90s for the last oil bust, uh, thinking that this time really is different. But uh, as far as converting to other energy sources, that type of thing, how far realistically are we from any type of conversion? Uh, so far out, there's no line of sight on it. Um, we increase in demand faster than we replace um, with renewables. I mean, so the demand goes up fast enough to outpace all the new growth that we're seeing in this renewable sector. And there's a lot of talk about trying to um, make nuclear safer or get people more comfortable with it, not retire it as fast because you know, if you do start retiring that, I mean, we're already at such a huge energy deficit and prices are uh, so much higher than normal times. Uh, and what's kind of out of whack is, you know, the price of oil and gas compared to the price of, you know, a gallon at the pump or just your electricity, it's out of whack. Technically, the price of the hydrocarbon should be higher. And I think that's because it's being stimulated so much by our own reserves. And that being below um, its, its level, and I think it goes back all the way to, I want to quote it right, but it's sometime in the 70s, 71, 72, 73. We might check that after we get off. But um, we haven't been this low in our strategic petroleum reserve um, in roughly 45, 50 years. So uh, that's what's kind of stimulating the price, but there's also a disconnect downstream uh, to the consumer. And it's a matter of time before they go, hey, we're getting too low. We can't stimulate it anymore. And I think that's why we didn't hit 150 or $200 a barrel earlier in the year. Uh, but unless we continue on this road to a recession, that's where we're going to be probably first, second quarter of next year. All right. So uh, as far as you guys, uh, right, where what's your business plan ahead? How much are you looking to increase production? And how much can you increase production based on all the labor constraints and, and material shortages, all that? Don't just survive, thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Torque Resources is an exploration company establishing a portfolio of premier copper gold early stage projects in Chile. Torque's management and technical teams have a strong track record of raising capital, discovery, and monetization of exploration successes. The company's Margarita Copper Gold project is located within the prolific coastal Cordillera Belt in Chile, which hosts some of the world's largest and most profitable copper mines. The Margarita project possesses excellent discovery potential for a major copper discovery due to the strength of the alteration system, large-scale magnetic targets, and the presence of copper oxide mineralization. Drilling is anticipated to begin in Q3 of this year. Torque trades in Canada under TORQ and on the OTC under TRBMF. To learn more, go to torqueresources.com. That's torqueresources.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. Um, I mean, that is a good question. I would say as much bandwidth as we have, we will use to the fullest. 
Um, we've had quite a bit of luck in picking up assets and an attractive offer because so many people are throwing their hands up with the with the labor issues that if they can just you know get out of something and not take too big of a hit they're willing to um and we've kind of started bringing everybody in-house so much the industry uses contractors those contractors have picked who they want to be loyal to so unless you're willing to bring those people on full time give them benefits and a lot of things that energy companies don't typically do you're just not going to get the work but if you're willing to do that i mean it's it's kind of like the land of milk and honey right now and you've got what no one else does and you can move quicker and you can do a lot more and it's uh it's a wide open playing field okay so what's the situation now as far as fracking goes uh you know it seems like uh, they pulled back a bit and now right. that price is so high, especially with nat gas, uh, I would think those rigs are uh, going full bl- full tilt. Yeah, well, I mean, you see a lot of consolidation or earlier in the year, you saw a lot of co- consolidation in this space. And I think people are spending a lot of these increased revenues and in picking up things rather than drilling new wells. So it's it's the same production out there and production's always declining at a rapid rate. And what little bit of drilling there is, is kind of offsetting some of that decline. And I mean, some of the best in the business, like we heard Scott Sheffield say uh, at least a dozen times this year, Pioneer is only going to grow its production 5% this year. Compare that to the last boom. Um, People are showing restraint and it's the big companies mostly. um, And then the little companies that just can't get it done. But I think that's why I'm so comfortable that this is going to be here for anywhere between another 18 to 24 months um, Mm -hmm. because that's the mindset people aren't going to get taken to the cleaners again they kind of like where they are they're enjoying the increase in revenue so they're making more money in this boom than they did in the previous ones by being uh you know i guess that by restraining uh their spending right okay well i can see that it makes a lot of sense that uh, this one's got some legs Uh, we had a situation like five, well, up until the past three years, where we had all these uh, shut-in wells, uh, mm-hmm. basically sunken costs. And, sunken costs, right? yeah. Because we had, uh, because dry gas uh, was selling at $1.80 and for MCF, and it's just, there was no profit in it, so they were shut in. We had thousands and thousands of these wells. Now, it's hard to get a take on it from people. I've asked this question to a number of people in uh, ONG. And basically, if I understand it correctly, uh, those shut-in wells are no longer shut in. They're no longer shut in, but, our, well, I'd say some of them are no longer shut in. Um, since horizontal drilling and hydraulic factoring has been the main strategy for most companies for a little over the last decade, um there's something technical to consider you know they've got their deep wells their long laterals they come with a lot of maintenance and they come with a lot of pressures that some of the conventional wells uh either don't experience or don't have so yeah all these shut-in wells they tried to bring them on as prices uh came back and i would say somewhere somewhere around 60 70 percent of them uh were just fine but a lot of wells they either parted casing were so corroded that they uh, couldn't be fixed. Um, And then, you know, you shut a well in like that, it pushes pressure in other places. A new well down the road might have um, offset its equilibrium just for a layman term. Uh, And now it's not there anymore or it's producing a whole lot less. So it's like, okay, we had all this production when everything dipped. Where did it go? Well, heck, we tried to put it back and uh, it changed. So that's the that's the biggest issue when prices went so low for so long to the degree that they did is you can't just say, OK, uh, flip the switch up and it's turned back on. Um, I'd say in more cases than not, you can. But that chunk that didn't come back uh, it made a huge impact. And now people are just slowly replacing that. Um, but it takes a while. I understand. I understand. Well, that's the best answer I have gotten so far to that question, Grant. So all the ones that could easily easily be brought back online have been, and the ones that uh, couldn't 
haven't been, and maybe they can be, uh, you know, recompleted at some point, but maybe. In some cases, yeah. In some cases they can if there's uh, other pay zones, um, but these these reservoirs are just so sensitive and um, they don't do well, you know, changing things up that much. So that's kind of the reason it played out that way. So they don't age well, huh? <laughs> right. Well, they age well if they're taken care of. Yeah. Um, I guess if someone's in great shape and takes five years off and then tries to come back at the same level, it may not work. Uh, and some can train their way back into it. Some lose it forever. Yep. All right. Well, that's a good analogy. So, uh, hey, Grant, people want to find out more about what you're doing, connect with you on the web. Is there a way to do that? Yeah. Um, there's a, there's one of those little informational tabs on the website. You can submit your information. If you're interested in what we're doing or um, want to learn more, that's a great way. We're on all the social media networks. And then I love doing these podcasts, getting to talk to different people, uh, get their take on things and kind of see where the conversation goes so we can get a little bit more in depth with the subject and just kind of promote good feelings about the industry because there's so much negativity that surrounds it. But we got to have it. So um, just doing it in a responsible manner is just something I'm always excited to talk about. Hey, and uh, we, we got to have it. We're about to find out uh, what could happen to an entire continent when it doesn't have it or it doesn't have enough for right. the, uh, what potentially could be a very cold winter. Uh, hey, it's uh, it's essential. Uh, the whole economy, the whole planet runs on energy. So uh, right. all these nice opinions, wouldn't it be great if, but the fact of the matter is, uh, for the foreseeable future, a large portion of our energy production is going to come from uh, hydrocarbons. There's no way around it. Well, we appreciate it. Hey, if you got a question for Grant, you can shoot me an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. Don't forget, go over to the site, financialsurvivalnetwork.com, and make sure you sign up for our newsletter. Grant, thanks so much for coming on. Been a pleasure. Yeah, Kerry, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to Kerry Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.